All right, the Lord be with you. It is so great to be here together for our 120th anniversary at St. John's. Yes, let's have a round of applause for that. Since today is homecoming, if you are, have been a past member of St. John's and you are visiting us today, will you please stand so we can acknowledge you and give you a warm welcome back to St. John's? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We are so glad you are back. So at this time, we move forward with our celebration um, by inviting Miss Kathy Pearson up for an, an announcement or announcements about our pictorial uh, directory. Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> Good afternoon. Happy anniversary. Um, I hope all of you have received an email this week, um, it, which is introducing to finally our online pictorial directory. Um, if anyone has not received it, that means we have a bad email on file. So if you'll contact Frances Pack, and Frances is going to hear her name quite often in the next few minutes, but if you'll contact Frances with your correct email, she'll send you out the letter that went by email to everyone so that you can sign into and or download it onto your smartphone. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. The information that was downloaded was what the church had in their shepherd staff, which is their computer program. And if there's any corrections that you need to make, it notifies uh, Frances, so she'll know to make those changes in the shepherd staff. I will personally be in the fellowship hall between services throughout the month of October to help anybody who needs help whether it's navigating through the app on your smartphone or downloading a picture. Um, the downloading really is self-explanatory, but for those people who aren't at all familiar with technology, I understand. But if you do have someone that can help you, it's just a matter of uploading a picture and you're done. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Again, I'll be in the fellowship hall between services throughout the month of October. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Kathy. And at this time, I invite Ms. Erica McCarthy up for a announcement about name tags. These are pretty sweet name tags. I really dig them. They are awesome. Okay. Um, some of you have already discovered the name tags, and some of you noticed them even before our 10 a.m. worship service, but they are all on the purple tables back here. Um, name tags... The whole idea of name tags was for us to feel as St. John's that we are creating more of a culture of invitation for visitors coming in and also to be seen. Um, we don't all know each other still because we do still have the different worship services and we don't all pass the same paths. So I hope that everyone is taking this on as a positive and moving forward experience. With that said, human error is made, and there may be misspellings, and your name tag might even be missing. So forgive me if that is the case. There is a clipboard with a piece of paper on there, so if your name is not how you want it to be, or if your name tag is missing, please let us know on the clipboard back there. Um, additionally, you can take this name tag, keep it with you, and bring it back with you every Sunday. Or there will be magnetic boards located here in the PLC, and there will probably be two for the 11 a.m. service at different entrances. So if your name tag remains on that table, you're going to go on a magnetic board so that it will be there anytime you come in these worship spaces. If you have any questions, also find me later and ask. The last thing I do want to mention is you'll notice that they're magnetic. If you have a pacemaker or any other reason for which you should not have a magnet, also put that down on the clipboard. Um, after this day, a lot of this will go um, to Frances Pack. I'm not sure where Frances is, but she's getting a lot of roles taken on now. Hey, Frances. Um, she will be the one after today to communicate with if you have other changes or 
needs with that. The second thing, sorry, Ben, I'm going to announce one more thing. Um, this was last minute. We did not expect everything to be here by today. But at the white table, next to where the name tags are, we have brand new St. John's logo items. We have car magnets, we have ink pens, we also have coffee mugs. Um, we may expand beyond that, but this is where we're going to start. Um, they are for purchase, and that is really just to cover the cost. We're not fundraising with this. This is just to cover the cost, but we think people like a little bit of church swag from time to time. So that's it. And if you have questions, just find me after the luncheon. Thank you. All right. Up next, we have a few appreciation announcements we'd like to, to do. And at this time, if Mr. Martin Agner and uh, Mr. Lee Haglin could meet me up at the front here. When I arrived at the service this morning, my wife whispered in my ear that uh, I was supposed to say a few words uh, because we are honoring the retirement of Linda Ebert uh, from the chancel choir. And uh, so I've had a few moments to, get, to gather my thoughts. Linda, would you stand up, please, so everybody knows where you are? I think it's tremendously impor important that, that Linda be the one to be honored this morning since we're so concerned with the history of St. John's Lutheran Church. She has been in the chancel choir for many a year. How, how many years was it, Linda? As, as best as I can remember, I want to give you a little bit of a history of the, ch of the chancel choir and the directors thereof. Uh, since it, it really wasn't included in, in any of the other history that you've heard. Uh, going back to 1966 was when Perry Daniels took over the directorship of the Chancellor Choir here. Perry was a professor of music at Converse and a wonderful musician, and he built the choir and, uh, and did a wonderful job for 25 years. Uh, the historians that know more about it can please correct me if I have any of this wrong. And then there was a transition year when Perry retired. Uh, Tom Wine, who was the director at Spartanburg High School, I think took over. Was it for one year? Uh, was, it, was it five years? Was it that long? Yeah, it, it was, it was uh, anyway, it was a fairly brief time. And then he went on to Texas to graduate school. And then I was privileged to uh, take over the job. And I was here for 21 years from 1992 to 2013. And while I was here, the, 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 the council was kind enough to give me money to hire a paid tenor. And uh, since I was a, a professor at Wofford College, I was on a committee to hire a new German professor. And, uh, and she turned out to be Kirsten Crick Eigner. And uh, during the, her interviews, I found out her husband was a very talented tenor. And so shamelessly, I jumped, I jumped on that right away and I talked to Martin and talked him into being our paid tenor. So he was in, he was in the choir as, as a tenor for quite, uh, several years while I was, was, I was still directing. And I don't know how many of you know this, but uh, Martin is, in, in addition to being a talented musician and one of the best readers of music I've ever been around, he is a Grammy-winning sound technician. He's, he's, done, he's done major sound technical work for, for for groups like uh, the Deutsche Grammophon and, and other, you know, really, really good uh, labels. Uh, and then I retired in 2013, and it was only natural that Martin take over, which he has done so. Now, through all of these years, Linda Ebert was in the choir. And, and I, I'll, I'll never forget how faithful she was during my time there. She always showed up for rehearsal, always showed up on Sunday morning. I can't remember a time when she didn't do either of those. And she also, that I always remember, she had a look. If there was a piece that I had chosen for an anthem that she wasn't particularly fond of, I got the look. But I also know that there were several times when I did that and she didn't like it at first. After we rehearsed it a few times, she grew to like them and she always sang faithfully. Linda, God bless you and thank you for all those years in the choir. Thank you. Yeah, the look. We know it well. Um, but also the look of approval many, many times. 
Um, so, Linda, we will honor you with a certificate, and I, if I may, read what's on, written on that certificate. St. John's Lutheran Church gives our grateful thanks to Linda Huey Ebert for your lifetime of service to the choirs of our congregation. Choirs, plural. This special appreciation is offered today to Linda, who is retiring from the choir this year. We thank her for the service she has given us. This service has lasted quite some time, for Linda has been singing in choirs at our congregation since before we were called St. John's. And if you paid attention to the sermon, you know when that was. Thank you, Linda, for sharing your talent and your love of music, of God, and of our church with us all, September the 25th, 2022. Right, one more round of applause for Miss Linda. At this time, I invite Miss Inika Pitt and Erica McCarthy up for a special appreciation announcement as well. Now that we have just celebrated um, Linda and her time, we have someone else we would like to celebrate um, for her time, and that is Mrs. Dana Homan. And we would like um, for Dana to stand up. Sorry, I've already lost where she was. Oh, no! Is she in the restroom? <laughs> Did we mess this up? Oh, my gosh, this is hilarious. She's coming in. You know what, everyone, let's just start clapping really loud when she walks in. Hang on, hang on. Ready? Start clapping. Woo! <laughs> Perfect timing. Please come up here. Um, we would really like to acknowledge Dana's time as leading our cast, which is our, um, oh gosh, I always say this wrong. Crucifer and Acolyte service team. And they have been a part of our worship service and all kids, if they wanted to do it, or I think last year it was like, you kind of got to do it. Um, they were a part of that. And this is a huge tradition that has been going on for many years. Um, so we would like to honor her with a plaque of her 10 years of service with this. Okay. And on behalf of um, St. John's Youth, really, because she invested a lot of time with the kids, thank you. Thank you so much. Do you want to say anything? <laughs> thank you very much. This has been a wonderful thing for my life and uh, a continuation of when I was an acolyte many, many years ago. You're looking at an acolyte right over there. See what can become of you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I just love this church, and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you all so much. At this time, I invite Corey Carson up for an announcement, uh, a very special appreciation announcement. Thank you. Man, what a great day. Uh, they asked me to give uh, this next appreciation uh, to Pastor Leinberger, and wow, that was a little intimidating, because, you know, what do you say? And uh, it's meant so much and done so much to this church. Uh, during his sermon today, he talked about, you know, a miracle back in whenever it was where $10,000 was given to, to start uh, the church. And I think another miracle happened in 1963 when the church called Pastor Ebert to be our pastor. And if you look around the room, I mean, um, I could probably say this church would not look the same if he wasn't here for over 60 years now. And that's, that's pretty awesome, pretty special. 
Um, when they gave me this and to present, and I first read it, it says, for your first 30 years of exemplary service. And I was doing the math in my head, and I think it was more than 30 years. <laughs> and then I kept reading, it says, uh, as pastor emeritus. And uh, I think just, you know, as pastor and beyond that, to continue to serve our Lord and, and con continue to serve St. John's, um, it's just, it's just amazing, and, and we thank you for it. We've got a gift here we'll bring to you in just a second, but uh, can I have one more big round of applause for Pastor Everett? And thank you for everything. Thank you so much. You truly are an inspiration, Pastor Leinberger. Thank you. But thank you, Linda. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Pastor Leinberger. Thank you for your just genuineness and your good and faithful service to this congregation of St. John's Lutheran Church. We have a PowerPoint with Miss Judy Librand <laughs> on the history of St. John's. Thank, thank you. you. Welcome to our first 120 years anniversary. This is fantastic. Um, in the 19th century, the area was considered a mission field for Lutherans, and 56-year-old Reverend Dr. Samuel T. Hallman was sent to the area as missionary to the Piedmont. After two years, he was able to establish two congregations, one in Greenwood and ours in Spartanburg. Click, click. All right, this is the uh, reenactment. At our 50th anniversary, we reenacted the 17 um, charter members. And so that's a fun, fun thing to remember. And the laying of the cornerstone, the Women's um, Missionary Society had set up the uh, funding for our church, and so we named it Women's Memorial Lutheran Church. This is uh, the Women's Memorial Church as it was first built. This is a picture of the inside in just a second uh, of the choir, and you can see there was a pipe organ. It was a, a, a lovely small church, but um, it, was, it was well ta taken care of. Uh, our second pastor was Pastor Kiesler, and he uh, joined us from 1927, and membership increased to 89, from 89 members to 190 in the four years he was here. This was a side view of the church. You can see at the front there, there's the, the staircase down to the basement. Okay, go ahead. Our, our third pastor was uh, uh, Day Wirtz, and he came to us deep in the Depression. Times were so hard that the church account balance fell at one point to 33 cents, and we still owed the bank $500. And the daughter congregation, Nativity Lutheran, was founded in 1937. Uh, the handsome pastor had developed a romance with Miss Vinnie Vogel, and after he'd accepted a call to Nashville in 1938, the two were married. They retired to Spartanburg in the 1970s. Raise your hand if anybody remembers them. Our fourth pastor, Dr. Charles Sheely, served us from 1938 through 1952, one of the most significant eras in our history. These are photos of the exterior of Woman's Memorial at that time. Dr. Sheely greeting members at the door after the service and the choir in front of the stained glass windows. During the Second World War, we hosted a Lutheran service center in our church basement uh, for, for the soldiers who were training at Camp Crawl. Uh, Dr. Sheely even married one of the soldiers. His sweetheart came to be married here in Spartanburg. And if you look carefully, that's the altar, the lectern, and the cross that are in our narthex now. But the church was just getting too small, so they developed the plan to uh, build a new sanctuary and bought land here on Pine Street. And these are the original specs that were shared with the congregation. This is the uh, news covering our groundbreaking in the newspaper. We renamed our congregation St. John's when we moved to Pine Street in 1949 and enjoyed a year-long 50th anniversary celebration in 1952. This is the cover of the program. 
Our next pastor was uh, Herman Fisher, and he served us from 1953 to 1963. In 19, um, that's fine. And there was a lot of improvements in those years. We put in the stained glass windows and the wainscoting in the, no, no, uh, in the chancel, I'm sorry. It's hard to believe it looked that way originally. The first visitor came out in 1959, and it's a one-page front and back. <laughs> In 1959, Pearl Noose was elected to the church council. She was the first woman in a church in South Carolina, in a Lutheran church, to be on church council. And Pastor Leinberger came to us in October of 63. Our church budget increased tenfold and membership doubled in his tenure. Uh, we grew to employ and equip for mission. As staffing needs increased, we first added seminary interns, then a lay professional assistant, Chris Sigmund. Charles Fritz, then Steve Marco, and then Marion Clark. At the end of 1965, we were able to pay off the mortgage on the original building on Pine Street. The construction included the narthex and stained glass window over the entrance to the church. The staircases were rebuilt inside, and now you can see why we have a stained glass rose window on an inside wall. To build this extension, our congregation took on the largest debt ever contracted to that date by a Lutheran church in the state. But in, on December 31st, 1989, we had paid the whole debt and were able to burn our mortgage. Synod conventions in 1967 and 1975 were held at St. John's. Many of our favorite traditions and programs began during the Leinberger years, most of which are still going strong. Our first Christmas tree, which was the first one in the state, was put up in 1964. That tree's trunk is still used as our Lenten cross, which we decorate with flowers on Easter Sunday. In 1972, due to the overcrowding of the single service, we added a second worship service. We celebrated the first German service, Christmas Eve service in 1972, making that outreach service 50 years old this year. Our first anniversary homecoming picnic was held in 1965, and in 1986, the courtyard was dedicated to Everett and Ann Leinberger in honor of their 23 years of service to the church. At the end of 1990, Pastor Leinberger's retirement took effect, and the city of Spartanburg declared December 31, 1990 to be Everett Leinberger Day in honor of his 27 years at St. John's Lutheran Church and his 31 years in ministry. Two years later, on our anniversary Sunday in 1992, we named Everett Leinberger our Pastor Emeritus and praise God that he has held that title for 30 years so far. After his retirement, our Associate Pastor Marion Clark was called as our Senior Pastor and he served from 1991 to 2002. He staffed to take our congregation to the new century with the goal of growth and mission. His associates were Stan Witten, followed by Jeffrey Earp Scorn, and then Glenn Engelhart. We developed the first Lutheran Parish Nursing Program in South Carolina, staffed first by Pat Rubel and then by Frances Stockley. In 1995, we hired our first rostered female professional, Parish Program Director Peggy Roberts, who became an associate in ministry. Pastor Clark was selected to offer the prayer at the original groundbreaking of the BMW plant in Spartanburg County in 1992. In 1999, our columbarium and memorial garden in the Leinberger Courtyard was dedicated. In 2000, our youth put on a Broadway-style musical, Godspell, with several performances in the crowded fellowship hall, which underscored our need for more space. We again undertook a building program, this time for a parish life center, with the master plan approved in 2001. As construction on the new facility got underway, overseen by member Frank Yant. January 1, 2004, Pastor Remy Librand joined us, assisted by interns. Parish Life Center was finished that year. We began the Thanksgiving Feed the Community Initiative, organized by Tina Nichols, and our biannual Red Door Festivals began, spearheaded by Tracy Bishop. Our church began to offer a second style of worship with a weekly contemporary service. After Pastor Librand accepted a call to Rock Hill in 2008, we were fortunate to have Pastor Boyd Cook as interim. From 2010 to 21, Pastor Mike Shackelford was our senior pastor, assisted by Pastor Emily Edenfield and then Pastor Aaron Morris. Twice, members performed a Living Last Supper as our Maundy Thursday service. We paid off our PLC debt and burned the mortgage, moved the altar in the chancel to make it freestanding, and member Mike Dose built a new altar for the PLC. 
Spartanburg hosted Synod Conventions in 2015 and 2019. We replaced our front sign and were forced to remove the oak trees from the front yard, so we renovated all our landscaping. We weathered the pandemic successfully thanks to the devotion of our members and the nimble creativity of our staff and council. Before the end of this year, we're planning to publish a detailed history of our first 120 years with stories written by the people who lived them and a lot more details and pictures than we have time for today. Thank you and happy anniversary. Thank you so much, Judy. We sure do have a rich history here at St. John's. And now at this time, I invite Jill Henley up for our endowment uh, announcement for endowment uh, committee fund grants. Good afternoon. Um, I'm happy to be here on behalf of the endowment committee. St. John's is blessed to have a very healthy endowment. Um, and each year the endowment committee reviews applications for grants. Um, we used a portion of the interest earned the previous year to determine how much can be given in grants. This year we are able to give $33,000 in grants. So we've had a good year. So. Okay. Our first recipient is St. John's own Ben Bernstein. We are able to award $6,000 towards his living expenses while he is in seminary. So, so. Our next recipient is Rosecrest Lutheran Homes. Um, Rosecrest is adding a permanent worship space for the residents, and funds from this grant will be used to add furnishings such as stained glass, altar, lectern, pyramids. Um, we do have someone here from Rosecrest. So once again, we're happy for that. So. Our next recipient is the Lions Club for $2,500. Um, the Spartanburg Lions Vision Program provides eye exams and glasses for members of Spartanburg community who demonstrate financial hardship. Okay. Our next recipient is the Service Dog Institute. We are able to award $5,000, and we do, here, you have seen, you've seen the Service Dog. Um, this will help pay for the placement of two Service Dogs with two families in Spartanburg County who have children with special needs such as autism and physical disabilities. Um, the next award is for Roos Gleanings. This is for $2,500. And Roos Gleanings is partnering with the Dialysis Clinic to provide nutritious, fresh produce boxes for their patients. Um, they service people who are, do not, are nutritionally insecure, and this is really a good program. They will provide fresh food boxes for patients at two locations over a two-month period of time. The next award is to Guiding Reins. This is for also for $2,500. Um, this will be used to purchase a computer application called Sharpen Warrior app. This will enable the nonprofit to create new videos and psychoeducational content that su can support veterans and family members through, with their journey uh, with PTSD. All right, the next award is for New Day of Spartanburg. Um, it's for $5,000, and this will re replace our commercial water heater, which has stopped working some time ago and um, has really hampered their operations. It's not repairable, so this is something we felt was very important. Okay. All right, the next award is the Spartanburg Soup Kitchen. Uh, we are awarding $2,000. Uh, they rely on the donations to keep their doors open. The funds from this grant will be used to purchase items such as paper products and food items that are needed to supplement other donations. Okay. 
the final award is for Trad's Giving Day. Um, Trad is a sixth grader at McCracken Junior High. He started a charity when he was in the second grade. Um, this grant award will be used to purchase specific items that local organizations and hospitals have requested in order to help children they serve. And will be, this will be distributed in February on Trad's Giving Day. Okay. Um, so we felt we had a good year. We were able to fund all of our applicants. Thanks. I wanted to say thank you to everyone who makes generous donations to the St. John's Endowment Fund. Um, like I say, our, our awards this year totaled $33,000, but since the endowment fund began in 2012, we have given over $186,415. So... Mm -hmm. so, um, I'm happy to be able to be part of such a, a giving ministry. If you have any questions about the endowment fund or how to donate to the endowment fund, um, please see a member of the endowment committee or a church council member. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Leinberger, if you could close us out with a benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.